Want an easy way to make the most out of your RTX 40 series card? Here's how to push performance even further or make it more power efficient with only two clicks. So this is the Tough 4090. This is a really fascinating card. Uh, not only is it just the most powerful beast of a card I have ever laid eyes on, um, and not only is the Tough card really, really well built, it is just all metal, really, really rigid and strong. Um, I love what they did with the build of this card, uh, but it's got a massive cooler on it. So you have a lot of potential to play with it, uh, play with the performance a little bit and uh, kind of tweak it to your own specifications. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. So I've got GPU tweak three here. This is our uh, GPU tweaking software as the name suggests. Today, uh, the title of this video side, we're not actually going to be overclocking and undervolting in the most traditional senses of those words. Um, historically, when you overclock a CPU or a GPU or undervolt it, uh, you're basically taking the stock voltage and clock speed because there is a graph that says at this voltage or, or you know, whatever, run it at this clock speed. Uh, and when you're overclocking, you would say at the same voltage, don't run it at this clock, run it at this clock. You're kind of tightening that that tolerance um, between the voltage and, and the clock speed. And that's going to be, that tolerance is going to be a little bit different for every card, which is why they're not maxed out out of the box. Mm -hmm. And and then you stress test it to kind of, it, that introduces some instability if you take it too far. And so you got to do a lot of stress testing to try and figure out that perfect balance. The thing is that these days, these cards and CPUs for that matter, we talked about this in our Ryzen overclocking uh, uh, stream, these chips have such advanced boosting algorithms built in um, that the card kind of does a lot of that work for you just based on its own parameters. So it'll say, you know, at this voltage, go for this clock, but but push the clock speed as high as you can go within this temperature limit, this power limit, and this voltage limit. So if you're in a really cool area and your temperature's low, you might your card might be able to boost a little bit farther. Things like that. And with GPU tweak, we can play with instead of pushing the clock and adjusting it with the voltage, you can do that. Or we could take a much quicker and easier route and just raise those limits on the built-in boosting algorithm and say, my power limit, I want my power limit to be higher. I want my voltage limit to be higher. I want my temperature limit to be higher. And just let it naturally boost as high as it can go. And similarly, with undervolting, instead of tightening that tolerance, we can just say, limit my power to this and see where that gets me. So if you are an overclocking enthusiast, you can still come here and you can boost the GPU clock however you want. You can boost the memory clock and you can do a lot of stress testing. But we aren't going to do that today. We are going to do the quickest and easiest thing that everyone who owns this card should play with, okay? So we're starting with a, a stock, bone stock uh, configuration here. This card is so powerful that it's sometimes hard to avoid a CPU bottleneck, even at high resolutions. So when I did this testing this week, I'm uh, I got some results that I have already written down, and I can I can kind of tell you about those. Uh, the results right now might be a little bit different because I am doing a lot of screen capture and things like that. Uh, so things may be uh, a little bit different right now because my CPU is working a little bit harder. And in fact, this is a little choppy on screen right now, but I can assure you it's pretty smooth. I mean, person. regardless, your, your CPU is going to be the bottleneck for a 4090 unless you have a brand new CPU, which you don't. But yes. The, the, so the, at 4K, that's sometimes, only sometimes true. Like if you're streaming oh, really? at the same time, like I am, then, mm -hmm. but at 4K, when I wasn't running any of this stuff, my CPU was not the bottleneck. Oh, because the goal, when, when you're overclocking and, and testing, you don't want the CPU to be a bottleneck because then you're not going to get anything out of overclocking. So that's why I'm running at 4K, even though I don't have a 4K monitor. Um, mm -hmm. You can also, you could run it at 8K. You can turn ray tracing on. But this should, um, this I'm going to basically show you guys what to look for and tell you that the, the results that I got without all of this screen capture going on, and we'll kind of see what happens. So apologies that it may not be uh, perfect. Um, How dare you? But we're streaming, so sometimes it happens. So this is a stock configuration. Um, you can see we're kind of in the 60s and 70s. Uh, the, our average FPS is is 64. Um, when I was testing this without everything, it was like 
10 frames per second higher. My average was more like 78 frames per second. Okay. Um, and my minimum was around. 20. So this is, that's like your stock performance. Once you do that, you can go into GPU tweak and hopefully it'll show up. There we go. The easy version of this is to just take this power slider bloop, all the way to the end. Max it. Max and take power. this voltage slider and bloop, all the way to the end. Hit apply. Now our card is overclocked. Again, well, you can push it a little bit higher if you want to push the boost clock and the memory clock and do a lot of stress testing. But this is not going to introduce a bunch of instability because it's just using the card's built-in boosting algorithm, but it's going to push beyond what the card does out of the box. All right, so here are our results. The average FPS is pretty similar. I'm, I'm not calculating the percentages here, but the percentages I found in my previous testing, uh, the minimums boosted by like 12%. So that means uh, your average FPS is going to be similar, but you're going to get fewer stutters, fewer hitches, things like that. Um, you know, when when there's a big spike uh, in necessity, that's that's pretty cool. And if you're playing at something like 8K, where you're like really just there's just no CPU involvement at all, um, you might see that max FPS go up too, and things like that. So it's gonna it's gonna vary from game to game, and it's gonna vary a lot depending on the resolution you're playing at. Um, whether you're playing with ray tracing. So when I tested Cyberpunk, this same benchmark with ray tracing on, um, the boost was a little bit smaller, actually. It was more like a 9% boost um, in, in those minimums. Um, just because of, I think it's, that's just because of the way that the, the power usage is interacting with those uh, RT cores and, and tensor cores and things like that. So, okay. So a 12% boost in minimums for literally five seconds of work is not bad. I will take <laughs> that, please. And again, you can boost that a little bit farther if you want. What I think is arguably even more interesting is if we were to downclock this card. Downclock? Why would I want less performance? I can already hear so many of you saying. The 4090 is such a crazy efficient card. And I know a lot of people like don't think of it that way because it's such a high powered card. But when you look at like, the the frames per watt that you get when you turn this down, it is kind of nuts. So let's just like take this power target. You could turn it down to 90, you could turn it down to 80, you could turn it down to 50 or 40, and then you'd get like 30, 90 level performance with like 200 watts. It's crazy. Let's turn it down to 70 for this example. Compared to what we were seeing before, which was like mid 60s average, right? Uh, that's pretty insane. Yeah. So because now we're running this card at like, it's taken 315 watts, over 100 watts less than it does at stock, okay? Uh, for what is appearing to be a very small decrease in performance. Now, uh, you can do this actually with any card. This isn't specific to the 4090. Um, I do this with my 3060 Ti back there to keep temperatures a little bit lower and uh, noise a little bit lower because that's a mini ITX machine and then it really enclosed space. And that works great. What's so interesting about the 4090 uh, is that it's so efficient that uh, if I were to drop that 3060 Ti KO edition down to like 70, 75%, I would see probably a 10% performance decrease. In this case, uh, you can see our mins are back down, but our average FPS is like uh, the same as the first test. Yeah. So this again, may be a result of like, there's all this window capture and stuff. When I did my testing this week, it was a 4% decrease for a hundred Watts in power savings. That's okay? insane. Yeah. If you want to keep your power bill down, I don't care because I'm on solar panels. Crank it up all the way. Um, or if you want to keep noise levels down, not actually an issue for me on this tough card, to be completely honest with you. When Even when we were running it overclocked, this thing was like 65 degrees. Oh, yeah. Actually, it, it got up to like 60. And the thing is like silent, okay? I, yeah. Even running this thing at 500 watts, the fans barely spin up. This card blows my mind. Even if you are, if you're just a silence nut, here you go. This is why we built this this incredible cooler with this vapor chamber on this card. Um, because even if you're in performance mode, even if you're overclocking the snot out of the card, you are not going to have very much fan noise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, but if you care about power efficiency, 
um, if you have it in a more enclosed space and you're getting a little bit of fan noise from higher temperatures, you can clock this down by like 30% and barely see a decrease in performance. Now, when I tested it with ray tracing, um, the decrease was a little bit bigger. It was uh, a little bit closer to like eight or 9% when I tested it. Um, but again, you, you can kind of test it, tweak it, try it with the games that you play because they're all going to kind of behave a little bit differently. And you can really take this monster of a card and tweak it to exactly your specifications, um, which is really, really cool. And that's, that's what I love about PC gaming, right? That's, that's it guys. Like it's that simple. I, I, I thought about doing like this really involved guide and like tweaking the boost clock and the memory clock and doing all the stress testing. But like, man, as, as someone who has overclocked like every CPU and GPU that I've had since I started building computers like 12 years ago, I don't, it, it's just so easy to just crank up the sliders and say, you know what? I got 90% of the way there. I don't have to do all this stress testing. I don't have to worry about instability. If you're an enthusiast, you can still do that. And sometimes I do like to play around, but man, these days, we make it so easy That's... with GPU tweak and, and and NVIDIA and AMD and Intel have made it so easy for us with, with their boosting algorithms and some of the tools that they've built in. Yeah. Most people, this is so much more accessible to the vast majority of people. If you're an enthusiast, go crazy. If, you know, even if you're not, just crank those up and call it a day. Thanks for watching our tour of this feature. For more on tweaking the RTX 4090, check out our full stream at the link in the description below. And to keep up with the latest ROG gear, hit that subscribe button and check out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash ASUS ROG.